a fierce writer and a very fine human being. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Carroll. This is a, I wrote this poem yesterday and today it's a hard, it's a hard poem to write because I don't want to romanticize something, but at the same time, I don't want someone, a good, great artist to be remembered for a last desperate act. Eight fragments for Kurt Cobain. Genius is not a generous thing. In return, it charges more interest than any amount of royalties can cover, and it resents fame with bitter vengeance. Pills and powders only placate it a while. Then it puts you in a place where the planet's poles reverse, where the currents of electricity shift. Your body becomes a magnet. It pulls to it despair and rotten teeth, cheese whiz and guns, whose triggers are shaped tenderly into a false lust and timeless illusion. The guitar claws kept tightening, I guess, on your heart stem. The loops of feedback and distortion threaded right through Lucifer's wisdom teeth and never stopped their reverberating in your mind. And from the stage, all the faces out front seemed so hungry with an unbearably wholesome misunderstanding. From where they sat, you seemed so far up there high and live and diving, and instead you were swap crawling down deeper until you tasted the Earth's own blood and chatted with the buzzing-eyed insects that heroin breeds. You should have talked more with the monkey. He's always willing to negotiate. I'm still paying him off. The greater the money and fame, the slower the pendulum of fortune swings. Your will could have sped it up, but you left that on an airplane because it wouldn't pass customs and immigration. Here's synchronicity for you. Your music's tape was still inside my walk bed where my best friend from summer camp called with the news about you. I'd listen then. It was all there. Your music kept cutting deeper and deeper valleys of sound, less and less light, until you hit solid rock. The drill bit broke, and the valley became a thin crevice, impassable in time, as time itself stopped. And the walls became vices of brilliant notes, pressing in, pressing in, pressure. That's how diamonds are made. And that's where it sometimes all collapses in on you. Then I translated your budded lyrics, and the phrases were curious, like incognito libido and chalk skin bending. The words, though, kept getting smaller and smaller until, separated from their music, each letter spilled out into a cartridge which fit only in the barrel of a gun. And you shoved the barrel in as far as possible because that's where the pain came from. That's where the demons were digging. The world outside was blank. It's every cause was just a continuation of another unsolved effect. But Kurt, didn't the thought that you would never write another song, another feverish line or riff, make you think twice? That's what I don't understand, because it's kept me alive above any and all my wounds. If only you hadn't swallowed yourself into a coma in Rome. You could have gone to Florence, maybe, and looked into the eyes of Bellini or Raphael's portraits. Perhaps inside them, you could have found a threshold back to beauty's arms where it all began. 
no matter that you felt betrayed by her. That is always the cost, as Frank said, of a young artist's remorseless passion, which starts out as a kiss and follows like a curse. Thank you.